Um, so today I'm going to talk about the magical TypeScript features and how they can improve uh, the project you work on. However, I'll show some of the examples uh, of NGRX, how we can use those uh, magical features to improve NGRX. All right, uh, but before we get to that, uh, a few more words about myself. Um, so as was mentioned before, I'm a software engineer at Google for the last six years, and the uh, last three I've been working on the Firebase console. I'm also a core member of the NGRX uh, team. Uh, who's here using NGRX? Oh, good, good, good. Great. Uh, hopefully, after yesterday's workshop, there's like 30 more of you who raised their hand, right? Yes, great. Um, I also write for uh, Angular in Depth and sometimes curate their articles there. And uh, recently, I started organizing um, Angular Toronto. So if you're in the Toronto area, you know, shoot me a tweet right there. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll we'll get something together. Okay, so TypeScript. Uh, who of you follow all the latest and greatest TypeScript releases that keep coming up and up? Okay, okay, okay. So then, as all um, 20 of you know, uh, this month uh, TypeScript released uh, version 3.7, which is, uh, again, another great release. Uh, lots of new features. Uh, one that I was particularly exciting is, uh, is optional chaining. Uh, something that we were able to use in Angular uh, templates for a while now, the question mark, right? So when we're trying to unpack uh, a deeper nested property, you know, uh, in TypeScript code right now, we have to do, you know, check the, pro the, uh, the object, then and, and access the property, and and access a deeper property. So that all be begun. You can now just use the question mark, just like we have in Angular templates. Okay, uh, so... 3.7 is out, and you can use that fantastic optional uh, chaining feature whenever you migrate your project to 3.7, which will be probably in another year or so. Great. Okay. So, uh, we'll go over a few uh, features today. We'll start with some of the basic ones, uh, like generics, uh, and we'll go more and more advanced uh, into advanced topics. But why do we need them to begin with, right? Why do we care? Like, I'm an Angular developer, I have my whatever service, and it's all good. Well, uh, to use, uh, JavaScript is a very, very dynamic language, right? You can do a lot of things with JavaScript. However, uh, to make it, you know, stricter type, you want to limit the developers who use your libraries, use your services, uh, use your projects to be more predictable, right? You want to limit the scope of what they can do and uh, you want them to guide into specific usages that you want. So all of that can help you. Okay, let's start with the, uh, with the generics. So um, I'm sure all of you know this, but for example, you have a function compare and you want to compare A and B and they, for example, are strings, right? And return some kind of number. So now you want to expand this, and you want to compare uh, numbers as well, right? So you can do a function overrides. You have a compare, you have another compare with numbers, and you have to have a fallback that you know, handles all of the cases, like A, B of any, uh, and you do your comparison there. The problem with the, this approach is that, for example, A and B you know, uh, can really be any, and, and TypeScript, will, if you try to compare um, a string and number, you know, it does, okay, first one, okay, it doesn't match string and string. Second one doesn't match, you know, no, number and number. number. It'll just, just fall, fall back, back to the, the uh, compare, compare uh, you, know, you know, any and any. any. Which, Which is, is probably uh, not, not always, always what, what you, you want. want. So, so for, for that, that to solve that problem, that problem uh, TypeScript has a generics, generics right? right? It, it generalizes, generalizes the function and extracts uh, that pro uh, the type property into the letter T, for example, here. So this one really enforces that A and B would be of the same type. Doesn't matter what kind of type, but it's the same type. So, uh, it, it, and they don't have to be uh, exactly the same type. Like here, here's an arrays, for example. So A doesn't have to be specifically T. It could be more complex um, type that's using T, like array here. Okay, uh, next, um, the function it also has a, another a great thing, that like extends, extends keyword. For example, here we say that u extends t. It means that u would be a more specific type of t. 
and then we can sort of have this kind of syntaxis and tie those uh, both uh, A and B together in a specific way. Okay, so hopefully you all knew that already. Uh, before we get further, the unions and intersections is another great topic. Um, you can basically union the types together. A and B, you'll get the C type that will be both, uh, it'll be either A or B. And you can intersect them as well. So that it's like joining the properties. Uh, this topic is actually quite interesting and some things are counterintuitive. For example, when we try to, um, to uh, intersect the, the two uh, types, we'll actually have the union of their properties. And when we try to union the types, we'll have the intersection of their properties. Sometimes it can be confusing. Let's look at a specific example that, for example, our uh, TypeScript team provides. Uh, let's say we have blue things, we have red things, we have big things and small things. So when we intersect blue and small things, we'll get things that are both small and blue. So their properties become a union, right? We get small and blue things. However, if we, you know, union uh, blue things and red things, uh, we'll get the uh, intersection of their properties, which be actually the empty uh, set, okay? With that out of the way, we'll get to more interesting topics, conditional types. Let's hear using conditional types, okay? All right, yeah, good, good. So conditional types is if the type is a subtype of, uh, for example, if T is a subtype of U, if it extends U, uh, we can do, you know, provide type X, otherwise we'll do the Y. Uh, where is it useful? So for example, we want to extra, uh, extra, remove the types uh, from T that are not that are assignable to you, so you they can be assigned to you as well, uh, and we create a custom type called diff. So we provide our T and U. If T extends U, then we'll uh, do a never. It's a special keyword. Uh, that means that it'll just uh, won't put anything in the type. Otherwise, it'll be T. And the example of usage of this diff would be you know if we have a type that's a union of a string and number and we try to diff that by uh, string, we'll get numbers back, right? So we have a, a union type, and we'll remove anything that's assignable to string, we'll get numbers. Okay, so the second one, a filter, for example, we can do the opposite, that are not assignable. Uh, we'll just flip T and never um, on, uh, on the sides, and uh, we can use that type now, for example, string and number. We'll filter only something that's assignable to strings, and we'll get the strings back. Okay? So you can uh, work with the conditional types, and they're quite powerful already. Uh, what's, in, uh, what's interesting, there are some uh, types that are already built into the uh, TypeScript. For example, a non-nullable type. Really, really powerful. And that type represents the diff of whatever object you have, which can be undefined or null as well, right, and remove, for example, anything null or undefined out of it. Okay, um, I'm sure all of you are using TypeScript in the strictest mode, right? Right? No? No? Okay, so you have a homework now. Come back home today, open your project, you know, uh, test config JSON, compiler options, strict equals true, boom. Help yourself, all right? TypeScript is your friend. Uh, use it to the maximum. Uh, for example, in, at Google, uh, we have a te um, TypeScript team who helps us migrate from one version to another. And uh, we recently migrated to version 3.6, which is great. We're really, really just, uh, just a little bit behind the official releases, which was fantastic. But there's no way on earth that would be possible without the strict mode uh, true. Uh, if Every developer tries to, you know, craft their code in their specific ways. Uh, you know, that'll be a little bit harder to migrate. So one other thing that strict uh, more enforces is uh, you won't be able really to swallow the uh, null or undefined type to so say, okay, uh, that will be just T, right? You, you won't be able to use it. So null and undefined really, you know, persist through all your um, operations and through all your inferences. So... Uh, say you have a filter operator, and so in runtime, with a strict mode true, in runtime you really filter all the nulls or undefines. You're good. 
However, in a strict mode, TypeScript doesn't really know that that's what you're doing, right? It's not, it doesn't know that, okay, after this ID rating, whatever type it is, that it's not, it cannot be uh, you know, null or undefined anymore. So what do we do here? To help TypeScript, we use something called like a, like a type guard. Uh, we'll uh, provide the return type of this function. So, uh, and here where null nullable starts to come in. We'll tell TypeScript that after this uh, method executes, after this function executes, um, whatever the type of ID rating is, it no longer can be nullable, right? So we'll do non nullable of type uh, ID rating, and we say ID rating is that, right? So we're removing any nulls on defined. Super useful, especially if you're uh, in strict mode. Uh, apart from non nullable, uh, TypeScript has a whole set of built in um, uh, conditional types extract, exclude, a return, a return type of the function, and, uh, and others. Okay. So those are your friends. Use them. Um, the other thing that's really cool uh, and was uh, added a little bit uh, later, somewhat recent, uh, is the inference in the condition type. So for example, if we're passing the more complicated type, for example, like an array or an object, we can unpack that and infer a specific type out of that array or a property of that object. So let's look at the example here. So if t extends an array, we want to extract uh, what type of array is that. And we'll do here infer u, and we'll return that u. Okay? And otherwise, we'll do just never. So we're unpacking uh, the array type. Uh, for example, we have a function uh, that does like get type, and it will return. Uh, it will take that um, array like structure and return that array type back. Okay. Uh, and for example, we have um, R our array of for example string right A B C, and now if we pass that R to our our, our function, TypeScript can unpack that is array of strings and give me the string back. Really powerful. Okay? So those are all great features. How they all getting together, for example, for the project like NGRX. So um, I was sitting at home this summer and, um, and, and, and planning some of my trips. And I promised the new talk, topics, you know, something exciting. And, and I get a tweet from uh, Lance. Uh, he's an instructor of uh, Angular Bootcamp. It's probably one of the most popular uh, bootcamps um, trainings uh, in states. Uh, and what he says in his tweet is, when I grow up, I want to be someone who understands generic typings of the new create effect. This is the new syntaxes that we released when the uh, NGRX version 8. Super powerful, super cool. We try to uh, sugar it uh, at, at most, make it compact and concise. Okay, uh, so apparently he was surprised of, or, or, uh, of some of the behavior of that function, the create effect function, and how can it uh, you know, infer different types or set different rules based on you know, what we're passing as one of the arguments. Okay, so let's see here. Um, all right, so what, what problem are we trying to solve? So. Say we have a property in a class, for example, delete models here, and it's an effect. And it, you know, we give the value of it, oh, action pipe, so this is like an observable, and it does something. What we really want to do is to make sure that this delete models is the observable of some kind of action. Okay? However, uh, in the decorator, the only way to really enforce it is provide the type explicitly. Unfortunately, uh, many examples that I saw, people you know, run into problems not providing the type and then uh, you know, doing it a little bit incorrectly. And then what happens? Well, in runtime, you, you get a, you know error message because the TypeScript here is not helping you. Compile time, no help. Decorators are not, are not type safe. Okay? They cannot enforce certain types on their properties. However, uh, so here we have effect, we'll, and then if we pass a special config to our effect, for example, dispatch falls here, 
we no longer want it to be observable of action. It could be observable of whatever we, whatever it is, right? The only thing we require is observable, so we can do observable of unknown. That means based on different configurations, we want to have a different behaviors of different types. So the only uh, so decorators are not type safe. Okay, proper decorators. What is type safe? Well, function is type safe. We can sort of force uh, a certain arguments for the function. So instead of decorator, we decided to create a function and wrap that observable with it. And what we did, what, okay, so if it's a dispatch false configuration, this is the second option. It's a fact config. If it's dispatch false, then we want to return something observable of unknown. R, right? Extends. We have a generic here, observable of unknown. Whatever it is, we don't really care, right? As long as it's observable. However, if it's a dispatch true, right, we want it to have an action, observable of an action. So what we started to do is creating the function overrides. And then we need to have a generic one, you know, that covers both cases and set the default value. Uh, and this is very oversimplified version of it. And it was working, it was working great. However, the function overrides is not the cleanest way to write the code. It's definitely one of the options, right? One of the options. But I think we could do better, right? So this is where I started to, you know, take it and, and unfold it a little bit. Okay, let's, let's look at the problem here, right? So basically the second uh, uh, argument of this function controls what is the return type of, the, of this function or uh, the source that we pass in, right? So the second argument, and actually not just the second argument, a specific property within that second argument, which is a dispatch. We're looking if it's true or false, right? or if it's there at all. Okay, so this is our effect config, which is a second argument that we pass in. And it could have a dispatch that could be Boolean, true, false, or even undefined. Somebody didn't specify the, the property. Okay, so we now trying to extract that specific type. Is it, is it, is it true? Is it false? Or what, what is it? So we do t extends an object of a dispatch, and then we infer the type. We unpack that object and get to down to that U, and then we return that U if it's present, if it's present. If it's not, then we'll do just true, right? True is the default value for uh, facts. They, we, we want to always dispatch actions, unless somebody specifies not to. All right, so we we'll start to unpack it a little bit. We have, your, we have our dispatch type. Now, now, config is a partial of that object, which is effect config. So C, partial of that, right? It's optional, could be there, could be not. Partial means that uh, all the properties on that object could, could be uh, undefined, which is fine. Okay, and now, now we extract that dispatch type, right? The function that we just uh, used, the type function, the dispatch type, and we extract that T. Then, We'll see, okay, now we extracted the T. Is it false? If it's false, then we'll do observable of unknown. If it's true, okay, that means we really need to dispatch it and it'll be, a, uh, it'll be observable of action. And we do type the resource. And this again, this is a little bit oversimplified, but in a nutshell, that's what it does. How cool is it, right? One of the arguments that we pass into the function and some of the property of that object can control how the entire uh, function is typed. Okay, so now what do we get now? We get type safety at compile time, right? Before we do anything. For example, here, if I map to something that doesn't return an action, I get right away my ID complaining that, well, it's not assignable to the observable of action. Okay, however, if we add that dispatch false, for example, now it's all good, no problem. I think this is what Lance ran into, and this is what sort of uh, you know, forced him to, or made him look into the sources and, and unpack what's going on there, uh, which I find pretty cool. Okay, so we have just a little bit of time left. Uh, one thing I wanted to show more is a create action. Okay, this is another cool thing. And again, the magic of uh, TypeScript and the magic of JavaScript and TypeScript that actually uh, provides some typing for it. So action is a simple uh, object of type string, right? 
In our case, we wanted to make, uh, make it a little bit more specific, so we'll type it, right? Extend string, and we do the type of T. So this is roughly the same, but we want a specific type. Okay, and then creator. So what we what are we making now? Our create action returns us an object that could be could have a property of type. At the same time, it could be called as a function. So creator here. And our action creator, which is a type of create action, could be, just for a second, think of it for a second. It could be an object with the type property, so object with the property type. At the same time, it's a callable. It's like a function. You can call it with some things. So with uh, JavaScript is like that. Functions are still objects. The function can have a property, which is kind of ridiculous, but then... TypeScript helps us deal with this and hide a side of some of the things uh, underneath it and still properly type the whole thing. Okay, so what benefits did it bring? Um, if people remember before NGRX uh, 8, uh, where actions consumed and where actions are created was a big problem to find, right? You had to find uh, by certain symbol as a string and find uh, where it's uh, dispatched by like, you know, classes. Uh, now, you can search by a single symbol, right? And we find where it's created. See, here it's created. Uh, this is where it's invoked as a function, right? So it's when it's dispatched. And then where it's consumed in the reducer effect. So by one symbol, we can do it all here, right? Here and here. Okay. Pretty cool, right? Um, one uh, last thing. We wanted to have, it has a special uh, property function, and it can take a type if we have a payload. But we wanted to limit one specific property. We didn't want our users to be able to use the type property. Okay, so how did we do this? Just very quickly, uh, created a special string, get a type of that string, and the same way as we before, unpacking the object. If, it, if T extends type of any, which means if that object has a property of type, we'll just scream and, and, and pass that string that, okay, type property is not allowed in action creators, all right? And that way, if somebody now starts to use the type, they'll get the error message right away because this is the property that we reserve for ourselves, it's internal implementation. Uh, so now they get an error message that probably can help them and save them hours of debugging. Okay, this is uh, some of the features I want to talk about. So thank you so much. Hopefully you can use them now in your projects and really take your TypeScript to the next level. Thank you.